Hello and welcome to this webinar. We're going to be using the ever popular uh, AutoCAD and we're going to take a look at uh, some tips and tricks on what you can do. Hi, my name is uh, Greg Benson Shettle. I'm one of the many Autodesk certified instructors here at Greytech. Just a little bit of background about myself. Uh, prior to becoming a trainer, um, I ran the uh, Address CAD studio for 15 years, providing drafting, uh, 3D modeling and animation services to a broad range of clients and industries from architectural, exterior and interior designers, service providers, MEP, naval architects and product designers. And for the past nine years or so, I have been sharing this experience as a trainer uh, and delivering courses to clients on a weekly basis. So I've probably trained by now well over a thousand people or so personally. Working with the Autodesk uh, portfolio um, with our power pack enhancements, um, we can aid uh, the creation of construction and manufacturing deliverables. We can help you verify those deliverables by using our simulation products and drive those designs into the fabrication process. After you've produced all of those drawings, of course, we can then help you manage those deliverables with our common data environments, such as OpenTree, linking your internal and your external uh, platforms. No other dealer in the world can offer this depth of integration across all of your processes to help you deliver your final package. Okay, on to the main event. Now, I imagine most of you on this webinar are seasoned uh, AutoCAD users, or maybe uh, you've been using it just for a few months. Either way, I hope you pick up a few tips and tricks uh, that will help you with your day-to-day -day, uh, work. Uh, we've got about nine or 10 tr tips to go through. Uh, most of them are gonna be quite quick ones. Some of them will be slightly more in depth. Uh, so let's go over to uh, AutoCAD and get started. Okay, our first tip is drawing an arc in the direction you want. Okay, so arcs. When we draw an arc tool, I'm just going to change this over to the door swing layer. I want to draw an arc to represent the door swing, the movement of the door. And we have got lots of arc tools available that you can use. And some people look at this list and think it's a bit scary, but they're all just three word uh, descriptions. And those three words also tell you how to use those particular arc tools, such as start and radius, for example. You click the start point, you pick the end point for the arc, and then you specify the radius. OK, so simpler than you may have imagined. I'm going to use this one up here. Start, center, end. So I'm going to start at this end of the door. The center of the arc is effectively at the hinge. And when I bring this over, it puts it exactly in the right place. Straightforward. OK. However, if I move this, over to the other side. And I then use exactly the same tool again. Okay, let's see what happens. So start, center, and I'm getting a circle that is being drawn in completely the wrong direction. Now this is because uh, the default action for drawing an arc in AutoCAD is uh, anti-clockwise. Okay, but we've got a neat little keyboard trick if you want to flip the direction of the arc on your keyboard, find your control key, the CTRL key, click on it, and then look, we can now flip the direction of the arc. There we are, control key, flip the direction of your arc. Let's move on to the next one. Now, 
drawing an arc to a specific length. Okay. In certain construction areas, you need to be able to define the length of a particular arc. Okay. So here we've got an arc of, say, and the length of the arc is 370. Now in the arc tools, one of the arc tools that we've got indicates that you might be able to just do that using start center length. Okay, but let's see what happens if we try this. So I'm gonna specify my center point right here. Um, I'll start it here and then I have the opportunity okay to specify the length so i'll specify this to be 370 like so and it's drawn it in but what is the actual arc length of this arc okay let's have a look if i zoom in here well it's not what i told it to be yeah i wanted it to be 370 but that's not correct and the reason for that is because this particular tool, the length refers to the delta distance between that end point as a straight line to that end point. So that doesn't quite do the result that you need it to. So how do we link, make an arc the correct length? We we'll draw an arc, get it approximately correct. And then we use a command, a specific command called lengthen. Okay, so I'm going to type this command in and we're looking for lengthen. Right. Down in the command line, we have various options. Okay, now we don't want the delta option, we want the total option. Okay, so we can click on total. It will then specify the total length. So I have this blue line is representing a handrail. If I wanted to expend, extend that handrail by 300 millimeters, I want a new length of 670. So I type in the new total length of 670. Then it will ask me to select the object. Now, depending which end of the line you pick, it will extend that end. All right, there it is. It's done, we are finished. And hey presto, it is indeed 670. So to get a arc to the exact arc length, use the lengthen command. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Equilateral triangles. Now this one seems quite straightforward. You know, drawing a triangle, how hard can it be? Well, if we grab a polyline, for example, let me just use my make current tool. I use a polyline. So I could draw a length of a line. Okay. And I say it's 200 millimeters. Well, let me just uh, put ortho on. Okay. 200. I then want to be able to make this at an exact angle, say 60 degrees. So I can use my tab key and say, right, 60. Um, okay, so it's not 60, it's going the wrong way. Uh, so perhaps it's, uh, let's see, 60. Let's try 120. Okay, that looks like it's right. And then I give it a length of 200. And if I close this off, have we, has it worked? It looks pretty good, but as you can see, it was a bit more complicated. Okay, it does look quite good. Uh, let's just check the angles that we've got here. Let me just change my uh, scale of view here. Okay. So there we are, 60. 60. 60. So that has worked, but there's a simpler way to do it. Up on our draw tools, we have got uh, the rectangle tool. Underneath it, however, if you use the drop down, you'll find something called polygon. Okay, so polygon. And we can enter the number of sides. So I could just say three, All right, three. And then all I have to do is I can choose inscribed or circumscribed. And look at this. 
immediately, I've just been able to draw a perfect equilateral triangle. So be aware that you've got this polygon tool that you can use. Okay, okay cracking on. Here we go. Um, mirror about an invisible line. So here's a common task that we have to do. Uh, you have a shape on one side and you need to be able to mirror it across to the other. So how does this work? Now we need to draw a line of reflection that is perfectly through the middle of this space, but there's no supporting geometry available. Now you could draw in some construction geometry and then pick up on a midpoint, but sometimes that's just not practical. So here's the way you can do it, even when there's no geometry to pick on. I'll select my two little rectangles. I'll start the mirror command and it will ask us to specify the first point of the mirror line, the line of reflection. Here's what you do. Hold the control key down and right click the mouse. This opens up something called the temporary override menu and it gives us some additional tools. And here's the one we're going to use mid between two points. This is a really useful tool. I use it a great deal. So click on mid between two points. It will say specify first point of mid, which will be here. So effectively we're drawing an invisible line. Okay. It then says specify second point of mid. And here we can see, I can then just bring this straight up and we've been, a bit, been able to mirror that in exactly the right place. Okay. So that is using this thing called the temporary override menu control plus right click. Okay. Okay. Specific snaps. Tip number five. Very often we've got complicated geometry with an overlapping in areas and we need to get to a specific snap. Okay. Or you want to be able to snap to something that perhaps is not one of your default snaps. Okay. So you have in you, you have a set of your default snaps switched on, but there are some there that you do not have switched on such as tangent. Okay. So how can I specify? I want to draw some lines that are going to be tangential, even though it's not a current snap. We use the temporary override menu. So if I just start the line command, again, control right click. Now here we have a list of all of your regular snaps. Okay. And you can pick one of these that you want to use. So in this example, I'm going to show tangent. Now this is the temporary override menu. It's temporary because it's just for the next click only. It's override because it overrides your default set of object snaps. So you don't have to switch off your object snaps or make any changes. You can just select the O snap that you want. So I can go tangent to here, control right click again, tangent to here. And we are done. Haven't had to adjust the object snaps. We just use the temporary override menu. Okay. Next one. Right. The ability to edit a drawing in such a way that you can move items around uh, without having to spend additional time trimming or extending and cleaning up joints. So here we have a wall situation with a door in it and this door is positioned 300 millimeters away from this corner now perhaps we want to be able to move this so that it's 300 millimeters away from the opposite corner instead now if you just try to use the move command yeah you can you, know, you can select your objects you can use the move command and you can move it over here somewhere but then of course you have all this tidying up to do. So how can we do this quickly and efficiently? So here's the secret. We use the stretch command as a smart move command. Okay, so stretch using a crossing window where we click and we go from right to left. 
you want to pick up all of the door details and all of the wall details that it is attached to. I'm just going to deselect that dimension there. And then we press enter. I want to be able to pick this directly to a point that is 300 millimeters away from that corner. So when we come to specify the base point, hover your mouse over this end point, slide it over. So you get that tracking line going and type in the distance you'd like to be away from 300 mil, enter. And now we can just drag this over and click it in place. No trimming, extending or tidying up required. The stretch command as a smart move. Okay. Really quick multiple. Okay, really quick multiple. Let's see what I mean by here. Here we have a uh, parking bay situation and I'd like to um, put across a whole series of parking bays across this area here. And I want to do it quickly and efficiently. Now, of course, you could use a array tool, but perhaps you don't feel as though it warrants uh, that kind of complexity. So instead, I'm going to use the copy command. So first of all, I will move this into the correct position. Like so. Now I'll demonstrate this uh, at just normal operator speed, and then I'll slow it down just so that you get an appreciation of just how quick uh, this can actually be. We can bring this across just like so. And we're done. Hit escape to finish the, the copy command. How quick was that? I really like this tool. It's very, very useful. But how did we do it? These are just individual copies. We use the copy command. So let's go. Select the object that you would like to uh, copy. Okay. Start the copy command. Think about the destination. How do you want to position it regarding the base point? So it's going to be here. Now, in the standard copy command, it's just doing one at a time. However, if we take a look down in the command line, you'll notice we have an option that a lot of people don't see or ignore. And it's called the array tool. Yeah, it was so we can do a copy array. So I'm going to type A for array, or you can select it from the command line live. It will then ask you how many items you would like. So I'm going to say nine and enter. And now I have nine parking bays ready to be placed. Okay. At the moment, it's not working quite the way that I'd like it to. This first option is where you could type in a distance so that you could specify the distance apart. However, I just want to fit them into that space. So again, down on the command line, look, we have a fit option. So let's use that fit option, F or just click on it. And then you can simply drag this across and snap it in place. I'm still in the copy command, so I need to hit escape or enter to finish the copy command. There we are. So the copy command with an array fit, really useful. Okay, that's number seven. Uh, we're moving on quite nicely. Let's go on to the next one. So here we're gonna look at how we can draw a circle and make sure that it's directly in a corner perfectly rather than having to draw a circle and then move it once in one direction and move it again in the other direction to make it fit we can actually put this in right from the start now if we go up to the draw panel and we expand the circle options we've got lots of other tools in here that are very useful the 2.1 is very useful uh, but here we have tan tan radius so i can click in here and I want it to be against this line. So ta deferred tangent. I want it to be against this line, deferred tangent. And then we can specify uh, the radius for this. I'm gonna say a radius of 300. And there it is. Okay. So I've been able to perfectly get this in. 
And I could always uh, repeat this. So I do another one. I could even pick the circle and the top line. It's remembered the previous setting, so just go ahead. So there I have two water tanks or two sinks or two pipeworks, whatever it may be, two vessels um, put and drawn directly into the corner of a space. Saves you some time. Okay. So move on to the next one. Parametrics. Okay, so parametrics are some people that know about things, programs such as Revit or Inventor are probably very familiar with the idea of parametrics. Parametrics is the method of being able to create relationships between items. So for example, if I click on this shape, which is representing a metal plate, you see I've got lots of information popping up on screen. These are all parametric constraints. Okay, so for example, if I select this one point here and stretch it, look what happens. It's also stretching the one below and it's maintaining that relative distance of that particular circle. So these are called parametrics and these are little parametric markers. So there's a perpendicular one. These are some formula division ones. This one is making sure that it's equal length to the one above it and things of this nature. So up on the ribbon, as we go across the tabs, we've got insert, annotate, and there is parametric. Okay, so in here, we've got an assortment of tools that can allow us to create relationships between different items. Okay. Now, the one we're going to use in this example, I want to show you how we can add some dimensions and use dimensions with a formula to drive the position of objects. So I have here a circle, which could represent, for example, a, a hole through the plate. And when it comes to positioning holes at near the edges of plate work, uh, most engineers will use a, a formula as to how far away um, the circle needs to be from the edge of the plate. And that formula is typically uh, something one and a half times D, where D is the diameter of the circle. So let's see how we can get this to start controlling it. We're going to be adding some dimensions to it, parametric dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to use this linear tool here. I'm going to pick up on the center of this circle and then the edge of here and draw a line up. So that's one direction. I need to do the same thing again for the other direction. Let's just enter that. Click once again. So I'm going to pick on the top line, bring it out this way, and then click off to set it. So you click the object, click the two things you want to dimension it to, you place it to click it again. And then because my formula is going to be uh, one and a half times D, I need a diameter dimension so that the program knows what the diameter of this circle is. Okay. So we can now apply some formulas to these identified elements. You can see that they are identified. This measurement is D1. This measurement is D2. And this is dia one. Back up on the parametric panel, we have here the parametric manager. If we click in here, we can see all of the uh, parametric controls that have been added to this. Okay. Here we have D1. I'm going to click on D1 and click in here again so we can edit this. So here we can add an expression, a formula. And I want to say 1.5 times dia 1. Okay, so D1 is going to be one and a half times bigger than dia 1. Now, when I press enter on this, it will fail because I've made a basic syntax error. Okay, the expression cannot be evaluated. The syntax is incorrect. Okay, what is it talking about? 
I used a little X thinking that would be the times. OK, so what we use instead is the asterisk, the one you find above the eight on your keyboard, or it may have a separate key entirely on your numeric keypad. So if I just zoom in here so you can see what I've done. So it's 1.5, the times symbol, which is the asterisk, OK, times that dire one. OK. And then when I did, as soon as I entered that, it has now moved the circle. I could, in fact, then use the same dimension, the same formula. If I do a control C on here and uh, let's find dia 2, D2, there's D2. And I can paste that in. And you can see now that it's perfectly moved. So using uh, these parametrics for uh, basic constraints such as perpendicular, equals, twos, parallel to. Um, you can also then add formula to your parametrics to give you this kind of control. Okay. So one for the engineers. Right, we've got through these quite well. Um, so let's see. Let's finish this off and do the kitchen sink. Now, we won't have time to do the whole of the kitchen sink, but hopefully when we look at this, we can consider ooh, some of the ways that you could approach uh, something that's got all sorts of complex curves uh, occurring to it to create the final shapes. Now, very often when if you're just applying a um, a, a generic sink into a kitchen design, then um, there's lots of places you can go to where you can download CAD drawings of kitchen sinks. But it could well be that the particular kitchen sink that you need to specify, there simply isn't one available. So you get hold of a sample, as I have done, and you measure all the elements so that you can get a fair representation of the sink that you're going to uh, propose as an installation into your kitchen. So we're going to I'm going to draw, start drawing this. We won't have time to do all of it, but hopefully I can give you some pointers as to how you could approach this kind of complex drawing. Okay, now I've got the actual drawing that I scanned in front of me. I'm going to go back to the home ribbon, check that my kitchen sink is uh, my correct layer. I'll start with a rectangle tool, which is currently hiding underneath my polygon tool up here. I'll start it right about here. So the length of this is 965. So we have two input boxes. So we type 965. Using the tab key, I can jump over to the other input box, which is the depth. And this is 500. Like so. We then have some inner rectangles. So we can use an offset to achieve this, so using the offset command. Now my first one is 18 millimeters inside, like so. Uh, then have another one inside of that, which is 30 millimeters inside. So I'm just gonna reset this to be uh, 30. Pick that outside shape. So I was measuring from the outside edge to give me this one here. OK. Now, these rectangles, OK, are pre-formatted polygons, polylines, OK, pre-formatted polylines. So let's keep that in mind when it comes to filleting and giving some round edges uh, to these elements. OK, so we'll start the fillet command. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to specify the radius. So R for radius. And my first radius uh, that I need to apply is uh, 25. So I have a radius of 25. Now, if we take a look down in the command line so that we can fill it this quickly and efficiently look, there's an option here actually called polyline. And if you use the polyline option, it will actually fill it the whole 
polyline. So just with one click on the line work, I'm away. There we are, it's done it. Uh, the next one is a bit deeper than that. <clears throat> uh, my next radius is much bigger. It's a hundred millimeter radius. So just set the go R and it's going to be a uh, 100 millimeters. Again, I'll use the polyline option. And that's generated a shape such as that. Okay, we then have uh, the next one. Now, in fact, with the next one, I'm actually going to offset this one that we've got. So uh, they have a 20 millimeter offset here. So offset of 20 millimeters. And in it goes. So that's the main shapes uh, created. And then we can get in, start getting into the detail of it. Now, looking at our sketch, we have this complex form here and then we have obviously the two main sink units i have an overall dimension uh, that goes up to the edge of this sink of 390 so what you would need to do is draw in some construction lines now i'm keeping a close eye on the clock here so i've only got a few more minutes uh, left but hopefully i can give you some pointers on this so I will draw a construction line using the line command. I'm going to make good use of my tracking. So I'm going to hover on this corner that I've got, slide this over and uh, type in 390. Uh, so I can draw a line straight up to here. I have a thickness um, or a distance between the two sinks, which is 45. So a quick offset here, 45. like so so that's going to create uh, this area that we have here now in here we have uh, a radius in here which i measured off and it's uh, got a radius of 22.5 and it needs to be 100 millimeters away from that point there, okay, halfway between. So, first of all, I'm gonna draw a line, hover, slide, 100 mil, and draw a line across, okay? Now, using the circle tool, I can put a circle in here, which we can then use our tan tan radius on. Okay, now the circle I'm gonna go for is this one called two point, two point circle. Because then I can pick on this midpoint and I can then define the size that this needs to be. And it's going to be, well, surprise, surprise, it's gonna be 45. So they'll be able to use one, of, using one of the other circle tools, I've been able to draw this in fairly precisely. Okay. Now this needs to then elegantly sweep through here. So do you remember the uh, tan tan radius tool that we demonstrated earlier? Yeah, tan tan radius. So I can do this. So I want it's going to be tangential to this line, <clears throat> tangential to this line. Okay. And it's going to have a radius of a hundred. Okay. Ah. I think I should have done 50 there. You just do that one more time. That's better. There we are. Okay. And then of course, using the trim command, we can set about trimming all of these elements out to create the shape that we need. Yeah. Okay, it hasn't quite 
brought in. So what I should have done was tan tan to the circle, right? Tan tan to the circle. And in this way, we could have then got this to sweep in quite nicely. Or perhaps we could use a fillet instead. And I'll give this a radius of 50, of course. Uh, 50 from here to the circle, but it's not letting us. So yeah, tan tan to the circle, not the line because it was slightly out. Now, yeah, we've run out of time, I'm afraid, but you can see using that same, that technique, being able to create this in here and get it sweeping through and coming round and place the rest of these items. Okay, so using your filleting tool with the, with the uh, polyline option. And once I got one of these drawn, I was able to use the uh, copy array just to copy these up along this side here. Okay. So I'm afraid we have uh, run out of time. Uh, thank you for taking your time out of your day to uh, join us. And uh, hopefully you've been able to pick up uh, a few tips and tricks. Just wait for a moment, see if anybody has any questions. You can always uh, contact me a bit later as well if you have any queries on any of the techniques that have been used here today. So thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate you taking the time out and uh, see you next time. And of course, you can always pop over to our website and uh, where we've got a list of previously posted tips and tricks across a whole range of different software. Okay, I'm Greg Benson Shettle. Thank you, bye for now.